नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुद्ध सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द डिस्कोर्स टुडे इज वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज शीला इज वर्च्यू और मोरालिटी दिस इज ए क्वेश्चन which acharya buddha ghosha was confronted with when he went to ceylon from india to learn the original teachings of the buddha which were forgotten and this was in 5th century ad already the original teaching the theravada known as theravada the uh, the teaching of the wise ones were completely gone in north india Oh, it was it was there in uh, various pockets that all were not available. So his teacher in Bhutan had told him, "You go to Ceylon, and uh, there they are preserved." That is how he went there, and then he studied, he learned, he came to know the whole thing. He wanted to now take back to India that great heritage of the original teachings of the Buddha. in the form of the mitaka and the arthakathas so now the singala mathiras were all very noble and great ones they wanted to test him and they said all right you show your knowledge and your uh, insight into the teachings of the buddha then we will uh, give you all the writings that you want to do you can do there all the arthakathas commentary and literature you can uh, tra- translate them into the original language of pali in which the buddhas uh, gave his teaching so they gave him at uh, one gatha one verse which said uh, a certain deva had approached the buddha it is in sangyukta nikaya there it is said anto jata bahi jata जटाय जटिता पजा अंतो मीन्स इन साइड अंतरम विद इन अवर सेल्स देर आर दीज टैंगल्स अंतो जटा बहि जटा विदउट अवर इन द एक्सटर्नल वर्ल्ड अराउंड अस ऑल्सो देर आर जटा देर आर टैंगल्स द होल वर्ल्ड इज जटाय जटिता पजा the entire humanity the entire world the world of beings and the external world are completely you see filled with all kinds of jatas tangles basically mental uh, entanglements that keep a being caught and bound in the wheel of samsara so he says anto jata bahi jata there are these tangles within and there are these tangles around without all around the world jataya jatita paja the entire humanity and all that are caught in this tremendous network of tangles tang tang puchha ve gotama o great gotama the lord gotama the supremely enlightened one i ask you to learn koi mang bijate jatang he says koi puts a question who is it that can disentangle this entire mass of tangles which are which are everywhere within and without in the both in the inner world and the external world the buddha immediately answered sile patithaya naro sapanjo naro sapanjo a wise person that means a person who is born with native wisdom jati panyaya buddhito a child which is born with wisdom with wisdom 
because of his high spiritual evolution. From life to life he has developed. So he is with this native, inborn wisdom, Naro Sapanyo, Sile Patithaya. He now establishes himself on Sila, on the dimension of it's a whole dimension, a whole world, a sphere of uh, moral excellence, sila, morality, of virtue, <coughs> having established himself, you see, on virtue and naro sapanyo, uh, sile ipatithaya, naro sapanyo, <coughs> Now he develops his mind having established himself in Sila. He now develops his mind with meditation, with right meditation. And Chittang Panyan Chittan Chabhavai. He now develops his mind and his wisdom. There is cultivated wisdom through samatha vipassana. He develops the mind with samatha, then develops wisdom through vipassana, and then atapi nipako vikhu. That very, uh, you see, effortful, vigorous monk, so imang vijata ejata, it is he who can disentangle all these tanglements of the world, both within and without. Now this gatha, one gatha that the, the Buddha, you see, declared to a particular deva who had come and asked him the question, that became the subject, you see, for uh, Acharya Buddha Gosa, and he wrote an entire you see, great book called Vishuddhi Magga, The Path of Purification. And it consists of three uh, sections, one on Sheila, the other on meditation, Samadhi, meditative concentration, and the other on Panya, wisdom, which actually, uh, the, the Noble Eightfold Path or rather the middle path that we have been discussing in this, during this course of talks. In this series we have been discussing on the middle path. Middle path is no other path than the Noble Eightfold Path consisting of Sila, Samadhi, Panya. Development, training in and development of Sila, moral excellence moral virtue, samadhi, mind itself, and panya, wisdom, which simply means the capacity to penetrate into the reality of ultimate truth, the four noble truths. So now we have been discussing all that, and in the last discourse we mentioned that Sila has to be very methodically cultivated, just and developed and nurtured in the way that a child, a little baby who comes into this world, whether it's a human baby or a non-human baby, it grows in a certain fashion when it is nurtured well and then it grows into something very great. So, Sila has to be viewed in that way. It is the very foundation, Adhara, Upadharang iti silam. What is Sila, the Vishuddhi Magga, in that uh, Acharya Buddha Gosa said, what is Sila, King Silam? What exactly is Sila? Is morality or moral training or moral purification or virtue or virtuous life? Whatever you may call it, these are translations. 
you can put it in so many ways, in so many words. But words are not important. The, the meaning underlying the words, that is important. And the, here the sila means chetana iti sila patisam vidamagga. There the Bhagavan himself he said, what is sila? Chetana is sila. Sila is volition, which means karma. Karma patha here in this particular context. Chetana hang bhikkhave kammang vadami. Chetaitva kammang karoti kai navacha marasa. E monks, I define and declare that a karma is no other than volition, will, will to act. <coughs> the intention to act either bodily or verbally or mentally. That is karma. So karma ultimately is a mental phenomena and sila being karma, evolutional action, is ultimately a mental, um, you see, non-corporeal phenomena. It's a non-material phenomena. So now how the Acharya goes on telling Silangiti Patisambhida Magga Magge Agatavya Chetana Iti Silang Chetasikang Iti Silang Sangvara Iti Silang Aviti Kamo Iti Silang In four ways you can define what Sila is. Sila as chetana, which means kamma, volitional action, and intentional action. And this intentional action, either in the form of bodily action or in the form of verbal or speech action, or in the form of thinking or uh, fantasizing or imagining all kinds of mental activities. And a, a mental action. So in these three distinct forms, this volitional action manifests itself. Now what exactly, we have to understand the importance of Chetana here. Now, the, a modern analogy comes into the mind. The best way to explain it would seem that a sila, a, a, a chetana, is something like a, 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 you see, a lighter, a petrol lighter. Now, nowadays you have got these little devices, you just click and the flame comes up. Now the mechanism is pretty simple. Inside there is a wheel, which is with an abrasive, which rubs on a little, uh, you see, ma magnetic little stick. And when this, if you do that like this, put it down and uh, with a spring, and now this rubs on that and creates a spark. And by the side there is this petrol. And this spark ignites the petrol, uh, just a bit of it. It also simultaneously, uh, you see, puts, and so the spark, you see, becomes a flame. It explodes. It ignites. The flame ignites the and the petrol becomes carbon monoxide, and that gas explodes. Now this explosion or what's an ignition, in the form of flame. And then you put this flame into any use you like, whether you light your cigarette or whether you light a, a nice candle and burn it and offer it to Lord Buddha. It depends upon you. You light a cigarette and burn your lungs, fill it with carbon dioxide and begin to cough all the time. 
get addicted, become a slave, and create a karma based upon craving for cigarettes, for alcohol, this tobacco. And that craving grows into upadana, into a, a attachment for it. You are addicted and you have to smoke, otherwise you can't go even to the bathroom. I am giving you my, ex my experience. Only when the cigarette is lighted, ah, you will have a clear motion. Otherwise, no. You won't enjoy your food either, unless you have a cigarette. Now, this is the case with the world. People are addicted with themselves, with the idea of I. I am. This is my property. This is my wife. This is my husband. This is my, these are my children. These are my properties. These are the cigarettes, my dear. Addicted to that, keep on doing action after action, all defiled action, based upon lobha, dosa, moha. Lobha is greed, or the passion for enjoyment, passion for uh, enjoying pleasures, worldly sensual pleasures, or the uh, you see, the craving to exist, keep on existing life after life. No end. Keep on coming and going, being born, die, and being reborn. This cycle, this whole wheel of samsaric existence, ad infinitum there is no end. You have your cigarette and you are born in the lower planes of existence. Because of this addiction to worldly pleasure. Cigarette gives you pleasure. Tama. This pleasure, running after pleasure, running after the pleasure of owning property and mind and bank balance. Running after sex. Running after all kinds of things all the time. Craving. And where does it land you? to the lower planes of existence, below the human, subhuman states of existence, either as animal or as a ghost or as a asura, demoniac being, or if it is a horrible crime because you can't get your cigarette, you kill somebody. Horrible crime. You may kill your own mother just for this craving, addiction. And that lands you in a place called hell, Niraya, Naraka. So now, these are the lower planes of existence where suffering is 24 hours. Suffering, bodily suffering, mentally suffering, in every way, the whole life is absolutely miserable, miserable, miserable. And you can't come out of that state. Once you drop there, it is very, very difficult to come out. It is only a Buddha, a supremely enlightened master of gods and human beings, that can rescue you with the with the discovery of the ultimate truth. So now if you don't, if you understand this, that this craving for pleasure, craving for enjoyment, craving for name and fame, craving for property, craving for power, you want to wield power, political power, so you create theories of all kinds and you may even use religion for that and set one religion against the other and create misery among hundreds, thousands, millions of human beings and just for power. It's the same old craving, the craving for cigarette. Now if you are a wise person, if you are born with wisdom, naro sapanyo, if you are born with sufficient wisdom, tihetuka jnana. 
then what happens with this wisdom, you know, that craving has no end. As much as you follow and run after it, it keeps on going unending. Endlessly and aimlessly you go on. You are drifting in the ocean of craving. So you said, no, I will not be a slave to crave. I am going to restrain myself. I give up cigarette consciously and deliberately and then suffer for giving up. For days together you can't get your bathroom clean because the addiction you have now renounced. You can't eat properly. You can't go about working properly. You become sour. You get temperamental. You, go, you hit somebody because you can't get your this. So after all these periods you go, you exercise your khanti, patience, forbearance, you uh, enduring patience, you endure your suffering for having given up your cigarette. Spiritual path starts with giving up. Not easy. Religion may tell you, no, no, you go, go on, have your cigarette, never mind. And then they do this, you, die, you eat this, go to this doctor, go to that and do all kinds of things and get along with that and keep on get along with samsara. But those who are serious, they said, no, no get, getting along with the world. We must go, not go along with the world, but we must transcend the world, go beyond the world. So that starts with yourself, training yourself, disciplining yourself. That is sila. Sila sikha, sila vinaya. That is sila discipline. Self discipline in order to bring about self restraint, self control. Which is a lot of trouble at the beginning, no question about that. But once you have done it, and you are a victor over your own craving. Oh my goodness, the happiness you get is, uh, you can't purchase that happiness. That also is from experience. So now, having lighted the light, offered it to Lord Buddha with the same lighter, instead of using it on a cigarette, use it on a on a candle, on a bhatti, on a deepa, and offer it to Bhagavan so that the light of truth may dawn inside you. Buddha is the very embodiment of light. The embodiment, he is the source, spiritual sun, from where all lights emanate. So you go to him and say, Buddhang Saranangachami. Then Buddha says, no, no, merely saying Saranagamana won't do. You better practice metta. You better practice sila. You practice dhamma. So he says, start with the foundation of all that is good. So the definition of sila is Adhara Bhutang Upadharanang iti sila. That which is the foundation, the very basis for all that is good. Now, child, in this world you have all kinds of beings and these beings are born helpless. Here in our world a baby is born. He is blind actually, he can't see, he can't talk, he can't hear and he is now he lands himself into this world of powers. After landing, the fellow doesn't know what is happening. Now the nurse whacks the back of the baby and the baby gets like that. He gets a shock and he begins to breathe. 
If he can't breathe, he becomes a blue baby and he dies. So this little whack, this little slap, is a good thing to give him life. So unless we get slap from Dukkha, we can't get out of Dukkha. To give up suffering, you have to learn from suffering itself. Only a kapurusa, a, 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 you say coward, runs away from suffering and cries and embraces so-called happiness and joy and sex and pleasure to get out of suffering. No. With pleasure you can't get out of pain. You get more pain. So you face pain and overcome pain. That is spiritual life. So, now, you take up, say, this baby who has come. Unless the baby gets protection, the first whack is a good protection. He begins to breathe. So life starts with Dukkha and also ends with Dukkha. And in between birth and death, it is all a river of Dukkha in which we swim. That is life. Only a wise person, objective, though a person who can think objectively, impersonally, can see it. Those who are caught up by addictions of religion, of caste, of creed, of all kinds of worldly habits, they can't see. So they are never freed from Dukkha. So to be freed from Dukkha, you must learn to renounce Dukkha, restrain Dukkha. So now the mother and father of the baby, with great love, with great sacrifice, day and night looks after the baby. The fellow can't even sit. He can't even stand or sit. He has to lie on his tummy or on his back. So anyhow this tummy lying fellow, he is now brought up nicely mother by the mother. That uh, uh, the baby doesn't know that he is making, uh, he is urinating or uh, you see excreting on the hand of the mother. And the mother lovingly as though it's such a nice thing that Ekhrita, uh, the mother, removes without any kind of grudge. Lovingly she does that. The fellow is pulled by the father and he nicely urinates on the face of the father. The father never gets angry. He says, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now this is how the baby is protected and brought up. Then he begins to sit. He falls again and again, but again he gets up. Then he stands. Then he walks. Then he runs. Then he goes to school. On and on. Then he becomes. Once he is adult, he walks on his own. He starts his own family and then gets in the jata of family life. I am not finding fault with family life, no. I was brought up in a family and I am grateful to my parents. But that is where Jata starts, that is reality. Accept reality and you will reach reality. You will arrive at the highest reality. Close your eyes to reality. Forever you will drift in the ocean of ignorance and delusion. That is what will happen. So accept it. Now this child is capable of becoming a great professor, a great engineer, a great scientist, a great astronaut and what not. That helpless little fellow now is a big astronaut, big president of a huge country and all that sort of thing. So now this little tiny bit of action called Chetana volition, a tiny helpless little baby on the tummy, 
lying on their tummy. That Chaitanya when nurtured by the parents, by the by wisdom, by uh, all the other mental qualities that go along with, that arise together with Chaitanya, with volition and which motivates the action. Now the lighter only ignites, that is Chaitanya. But that thing has to be, if you want to feed that light, there must be petrol, enough of it inside. So that feeds. So this feeding process is done by motivations of lobha, dosa, moha, alobha, adosa, amoha. That is, they are known as roots of action, good action, bad action. So all that is good in the world, good bodily action, good verbal action, good mental action, all good speech, all good write-ups, all good as you say, communications, all the developments in various fields of knowledge, so, and uh, let us say arts, technology, everything, all good things have their root in Chetana, good Chetana. The creativity Chetana, the Chetana which creates all these things. Like that baby being nurtured into an astronaut. So this Sila, tiny thing, once understood that a Sila is an action and that to come up patha, not mere action. All actions are not sila, but all sila are actions. Bodily action, verbal action, mental action. It's like karma. All karmas, that is volitional activities, are actions. But all actions are not volitional action. No. There can be non-volitional, non-intentional action also. They are not karma. They are not sealers. So having known that basically it is karma, and then when you know that karma is the basis for either bondage in samsara, you come again and again, you die again and again, you are born again and again. This will of samsaric existence is created by action. So, action ultimately is the brick and mortar of existence. So now once we know that sila is action, and it is the root of all good, wholesome action. A wholesome action can always bring forth results in the form of upward motion. A wholesome karma is bound to be born, bound to bring forth, you see, for instance, janaka upathambaka upapilaka upaghataka. Either as janaka karma, that means a karma which produces rebirth. Not all actions can produce rebirth. But sila as a janaka karma can produce rebirth. So if you maintain your pancha sila, now this baby, I will give you the example. The mother and father, tremendous love protects all the time. Now that parent, you see this, and they are, this protective mind has grown so powerful that he or she understands the danger of violence. If the baby is not protected, the baby will die any moment. So destructivity, killing, destruction is the root cause of suffering in the world. And the protectiveness, saving, protecting, not killing, but giving life, protecting life in all kinds of ways. You give dana, that protects life. You save in a hundred different ways. You promote the well-being in so many ways of life. That is the good of all, 
is good. Everything good in this world is produced by this protectiveness. Similarly, everything bad in this world is produced by miserliness, stinginess, greed, and all that. Non-giving. But the opposite, everything good comes out of generosity, nobility of mind, open-hearted, open-hearted charity, open-handed charity. Similarly, all good comes from restraint over the animal uh, urge for sexual pleasure. Either a man can and woman can become an animal, literally, if there is no control of morality over that, then the person can become animal. But if there is control, the parents looks after the children and the whole family and so much of sacrifice, so much of goodness, the whole society is protected by such good parents. Similarly, truth. All that is good in this world is protected by Sila. It depends upon Sila, Adhara, because it is in accord. It is in it is in you see, consistent with truth, with justice, with that which is noble, that which is right, that which is just, that which is uh, ultimately true. These are the yardsticks of Sīla. So, samādhānaṁ karoti iti sīlaṁ That which coordinates and brings about a consistency between truth and the action. Sīla is action. So, your action will be, have to be such that it is consistent with truth, consistent with justice, consistent with rightness. A person who tells lie and gets away by he comes and says, hey, give me a vote and I will give I will bring heaven here and on this earth. I'll protect your whole country, your whole uh, caste, your whole uh, community. I will do this, I will do that, etc. And I will destroy the others and protect you. Wonderful. So, all this lie that these people practice, the politicians throughout the world, has turned this world into a nightmare. They don't think that truth ultimately is the source of all happiness. And unless you uphold truth, instead of violating and transgressing against truth, instead of transgression or violation of truth, uphold truth. You see, from that, this, to be consistent with truth, that is the basis for Sīla. So if you undertake a pancha Sīla and you say, I am not going to tell a lie. Come what may, I will not tell a lie. And you stick to this precept of uh, morality, of virtue, by not telling lie. Twelve years you keep on doing that. After that, whatever you'll say will become true. Your word will acquire the power of truth. That is the power of truthfulness. So whatever Bhagavan Buddha has said, Whatever the arahat say comes true. It's hundred percent truth. Nobody can say that the world is not dukkha. Nobody can say it's not dukkhariya satcha. And nobody can say that dukkhariya satcha comes because of craving. These are facts. So Buddhism is based on fact, on truth not on theology, not on all kinds of theories, not on all, any god or any man or guru or nothing. Truth, truth, fact. So accept fact 
and then you will reach the ultimate fact. So Panchashila, if you understand the philosophical importance, the psychological importance, and the ethical importance underlying Sila, believe me, you can become a Sotapanna, one who has entered the stream of Nibbana. So, Sila, Panchashila, adherence to Sila, should not be a matter of blind faith or even mere intellectual conviction or some kind of blind, you accept it, yeah, everybody is uh, taking, so I am also taking. No. Knowingly, with conviction, with understanding, if you understand this sila, that it is ultimately good karma. It's a chetana. Now, for instance, panati pata vermani, adinna dana vermani, abrahma, you see, to uh, abstain from killing, abstain from stealing, abstain from sexual misconduct, abstaining from telling lies, abstaining from uh, carrying tales, slandering, or abstaining from abusing people, and all that, and hurting people, or abstaining from gossiping, the four types of verbal action, and the three types of mental action. You see, you make up your mind not to run after pleasure and things like that. No lova, no dosa, no moha. These are the rules. They are the mental actions. Abhijja, abhyapada, and samadhiti. So these tenfold courses of action, Kamma Patha, if you stick to that, then you will see that the Sila ultimately boils down to that. And that being so, it can take, it's uh, automatic it is, that you can never be born in Apaya. You can never be born in a lower planes of existence once you stick to Panchashila with understanding. Panchashila fully developed with, you see, Jnana Sampayutta Chitta, with a mind that is rooted in Jnana, in wisdom. Once with that you practice this Panchashila, a person can become a Sotapanna. And in Buddha's time, my goodness, hundred thousands of them, all Sotapannas. There were little children who were Sotapannas. So, if you never underestimate the power of action, and Silas is action, and therefore volition, if you cultivate the volition of, let us say, avijja, which means non-covetousness, non-seeking, that means to be very satisfied, to be very happy, with what you have got. Once you see, some monks came, Buddha was, Bhagavan Buddha was staying in Rajaka. Now, Bhagavan came, you see, as you know, Sakya Republic, uh, you see, there, <coughs> Kapilavatthu, that was the capital of the, of that particular <coughs> kingdom. <coughs> Sorry. So Bhagavan Buddha hailed from Kapilavattu and now some monks, they all came from Kapilavattu and the Sakyan Republic. So they bowed down to Bhagavan and Bhagavan knew them, all of them. So he said, how are you monks? Are you all right? And so forth. And then he gave a little discourse on the Noble Eightfold Path and the middle path. He says, now can you tell me monks, do you have any monk in your native place, in your native country, native city, where there is a monk who is the very embodiment, the very exemplar, you see, of the Noble Eightfold Path, consisting of Srila Samadhi Panya. 
He is absolutely perfect in Sīla, perfect in Samādhi, perfect in Pāja. And he is a noble one, he is no longer a Putrujjana, an ordinary worldly, but an enlightened disciple of the Master. Can you say by his behavior, by his conduct, by his external thing? There are ten such, uh, you say, criteria Buddha mentioned. He say, Apichasa, he himself is a man of very little, uh, you know, want. He seeks very little. Icha means wishing. He is a man of few wishes. He is a man of few wants. He doesn't want. He doesn't care. He is satisfied. He is a very, very contented person and so on. So this tenfold, uh, the attributes of a person who is the master of the Noble Eightfold Path and the Middle Path, he asked, Buddha asked him. So he said, yes, Bhante, there is one. And uh, his name is Purna Maitreyani Putra. That will be Purna Metta Metayani Putra. And this Purna, he is very greatly loved and respected and all that because of all these ten qualities. And so, Buddha said, Oh, very good, I'm very happy and so on. Sani Putra Vante heard this. And he said, My goodness, all these monks are uh, praising in, in the presence of Lord. That monk, he must be a very noble person. Oh, I, I may, maybe I will have a good luck to meet him. And so on. So there is a sutta called Ratha Vinita Sutta, where Sīla is purified. First of all, la last time, if you remember, I spoke, you see, in this discussion, discord, we mentioned about Sīla as a discipline, as an act, as a as a sikha, siksha, you see a discipline uh, as a rule of conduct and you train yourself in those rules of conduct and discipline bring about self-restraint. Then uh, sila as a bhavana, you develop the very essence of sila which is, uh, which is said, silanang uh, iti silang. That is a moral excellence, an inborn goodness in a human being or any being for that matter. That inborn goodness cultivated and nurtured and developed into a discipline, into a code of conduct and so on. So as you develop that, you develop your mind. And to be able to develop the mind and thereby develop wisdom and thereby gain enlightenment. To do that, there is a process of cleansing, purification. So, Sīla Vishuddhi. So, in this Sutta, all the seven Vishuddhis are mentioned. That will be the subject of the discourse next time. Today we will leave it at this. If you can remember that Sīla is action and the root and the very basis of all that is good in the world. So if you want to come back to a world of happiness, come back to a world of joy, come back to a world of create a higher creativity, Sīla, Pancha Sīla. With this I conclude, may the grace of Lord Buddha surround your lives with virtue. May you all be happy. Sukino Bhavantu.